Namaste and welcome to our continuing series, Explorations in Savitri, with our beloved Dharapai. We continue Book 3, The Book of the Divine Mother, Canto 4, The Vision and the Boon, page 345, at the break. So, Ashupati has asked for the boon. What is the boon? He has asked the Divine Mother to come upon earth. This is the... <laughs> rest is a natural consequence. So, you see, it is very interesting. You see, in Shurabindo and the Mother's life, in a certain sense, Shurabindo's greatest act was to establish the Divine Mother in different ways in India as the Shakti of the of India. That's how he puts it. Then and with the mantra of Bandi Matra. Then in the ashram as the Divine Mother who presides over the next evolutionary cycle. And then in the book form as Savitri, which is again the Divine Mother's word body. So this was his, if you, if you see the focus, but if you see the organization of all these things on the most material plane, it was the Divine Mother who does that. I mean, the yoga, its nitty gritties, its details, all its aspects. It is the Divine Mother who does it. And she asks the boons for mankind, the supramental manifestation. All this follows subsequently. So, he has asked for the boon of boons. And now comes a few lines which precisely show the uh, problem that we see in Shurabindo's yoga. Now Shurabindo, many people want to make it a mass movement in various ways. Uh, but we should be careful why Shurabindo and the mother did not want it to be like that. Because it's not a, not a new religion that is being founded. Not another cult not another path towards the one reality. But it's a complete, it's a change of earth nature. Meaning thereby, all the forces that have held earth nature right now in their fiefdom are going to resist and deny. And this he says in one of his letters, several letters, when he says, no yoga is easy, like French without tears. But in this yoga, where there is a conquest of earth nature, the difficulties are many, many fold. And we are given just here in three lines a gist of the difficulties. His prayers sank down in the resisting night. Oppressed by the thousand forces that deny. As if too weak to climb to the supreme. Thousand forces that deny. Doubts, could be, couldn't be, may be, may not be. All kinds of, even joining the movement, coming to the ashram, becoming a member of society, doing this, doing that, anywhere in the world. But the forces that deny are so strong, they oppose this plan. I would even add, should not be and must not be. Must not be, <laughs> cannot be. And all kinds of logic. From that, this is my nature, it won't change. I have heard it here. And I wondered if that's the case, then why are we here? <laughs> This place is meant for the change of nature, but not a human change, far greater, a change of divinization. Then that, well, Shurabindra and the mother, they are not there. Uh, how can the supermind be established upon earth? Uh, we don't see the appearances. Everything appears dark. So these are a hundred ways, thousand ways. Uh, people deny and... Um, Revolt against the divine wills. You know, revolt. Sometimes revolt can take very strange forms, very subtle forms. One of the forms is that, what is the use? I see this around and I feel a little depressed. This is a revolt actually. We don't realize it. It's almost like we are playing the role of being a very good, righteous human being, whereas there are others who are all not catching up and you know what's the use of even if a slight uh, twitch and a little suggestion here and there is enough so these are voices that deny and one must be very careful 
this has to be emphasized 10,000 times. Mother has said at one place, pessimism is the tale of the devil. All doubt, depression, despair are the locks with which we are locking ourselves and keeping us away from the divine. So, thousand forces that deny. And yet, but there arose a wide consenting voice. Now you see this, uh, how Shrabindo's uh, magic of poetry, many times, uh, this contrast makes the power even more greater. If immediately after this, it was, you know, there arose a wide consenting voice. It won't carry that weight. As when you read that his prayer sank in the resisting night, and now with a but, but there arose. Now that might and majesty of that voice, like mother alone is sufficient. That's how the mother put it. What do we, what do you expect from us? Who can say but the divine? Nothing. Not even a practice, a process, nothing. What do, should we expect from you? Everything. Some of her statements are from that highest voice. She says everything. Mother is humanity fulfilling your expectations. Since I expect nothing, I cannot say anything about it. Now this is like that highest plane where she says doesn't matter. The massive barrier, ah, sorry. The spirit of beauty was revealed in sound. Light floated round the marvelous vision's brow. And on her lips, the immortal's joy took shape. Now when we read through this wonderful passage, you see Savitri, the Divine Mother is described in various ways. The Divine Mother in her highest form, be that the adoration of the Divine Mother, transcendent. Mm. Then there is the World Mother described in the World Soul. How when she moves, the ages change. Then, you know, there are several places in the greater mind that even the seers and sages just have a glimpse of her and they made thousands of forms, but she remains herself an infinite. It's only by surrender that something of that glory can be revealed. Then her avataric form, the individual. So you see the transcendent, universal and the individual. There her personality is described in uh, uh, Canto 2, Book 1, Canto 2, oh, yeah. the issue. It's an amazing passage and Sri has himself spoken about it as through and through our mind. Amal Kiran writes about it. And here, while it is in the future tense, it brings the entirety of the, when the avatar comes, everything, even his form. See the beauty of the form. He has taken a form. Why has he taken a form? Not because form is meaningless. Because we cannot touch that transcendence. We are limited by the form, so he brings the transcendence into the form. And simply by contact with that transcendence in a form which is accessible to us, we too can change. So she brings all that in a form. And that's the mystery and beauty of form. Now people often say, but now we don't see the mother. Yes, but you have the mother's signature, you have her photographs, you have her pieces of sari. You have many things of the mother. Places touched by the mother. Today I was sitting in that little corridor, no, where uh, there is a door, other side, you go to mother's room and uh, there is the bathroom inside the ashram. So I usually sit there and I don't know whether I should reveal this secret or not because uh, I don't want that place to be <laughs> crowded, <laughs> taken up. Overrun. Uh, somebody was sitting there and uh, when I came, the lady got up with... I know you sit here. I said, no, no, it's fine. You can sit here. She said something. I said, no, no, you know why this place is so special? She didn't know. I said, Sri has walked this way. Did anyone know? He used to come down from the stairs, long back, and take that much passage into the bathroom. And when he used to come down, the curtain used to be pulled because you can't have darshan of the Lord like that. It's amazing. So for me, that place is special because of that. Now we have, they are touching so many ways. That's why people are drawn to come all the way to ashram. So this touch, when the divine takes a form, even in photographs, mother has said, I have put myself in the photographs. So that is what gives a concrete help. So we have the mystery of the form. Starts with, Oh, strong forerunner, I have heard thy cry. 
वन शेल डिसेंड एंड ब्रेक द आयरन लॉ चेंज नेचर्स डोम बाय द लोन स्पिरिट्स पावर द आयरन लॉ वेरी क्लियरली इज द लॉ ऑफ मैटर आयरन सिल्वर एंड द गोल्ड सो द लॉ ऑफ मैटर इट मस्ट डिसइंटीग्रेट दैट्स व्हाई मटेरियल बॉडीज मस्ट डाई द वाइटल नेवर एजेस इन अ सेंस इट इज इमोटल but it is the matter which dies so when we take a human body this is the problem the predicament that there is an unaging vital in a body that is perishing with passage of time so this iron law of death will change and on whom does she depend lone spirit's power <laughs> somebody asked you know i want to i want to help you in your work <laughs> <laughs> Shirvindu says, "Do you know what it means? <laughs> Help you in your work. <laughs> it is if we we should get rid of this illusion that any of us is helping in their work. But if if it looks like somebody is helping, it is because out of her grace she gives that you know okay. And in that sense, the whole earth helps in the work. So that the way we have to look at it that they are quite capable of doing everything by themselves, possibly better." but then you know <laughs> they are actually helping us by help allowing us to participate in that great um, wonderful event a limitless mind that can contain the world a sweet and violent heart of ardent calms moved by the passions of the gods shall come see in uh, india you have the when i read this passage for the first time and i had translated this into hindi some of the passages just out of my joy not i didn't give it for publication anywhere but the impression i had was the birth of durga the way she is described that you know earth is groaning and all the gods come together and durga manifests and she has this power that power the passion of the gods what gods cannot do and they are also anguished by the state of things they have been ceaselessly working for ages upon matter now they say divine mother we can't come down moved by the passion of the gods and what is her heart very different from what we at one place he says i have neither the something of a sage nor of the god you know she speaks of that so she says i i am not a sage or seer of that kind sages are supposed to be very benign you know <laughs> people describe that when they were in shurbindo's presence it was like infinity but the moment mother came it was like tremendous pressure for transformation they used to feel and you see when there is a very nice anecdote um, niruddha recounts that when shurabindu is sitting there in his all majesty concentrating into what we can never fathom some of them would be taking the newspaper reading some curly we somebody then sometime they would have a talk once they were having a talk with shurabindu and suddenly shurabindu says mother is coming mother is coming <laughs> and everybody describes it so beautifully mother is coming it's not fear or awe but you know you will be bare and exposed lot of people who have had contact that when she looked into your eyes it was i mean it was like laser going deep down and you can't hide anything it's laid bare lot of people have described this experience with shurabindu it was like they are getting lost in his infinity but with mother see her look it was like she's doing a surgery inside you right there where the worm is hiding <laughs> and you may say mother please 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 no it's done that's it <laughs> and sometimes the effect could be i mean chotnarayan ji when he would 15 days start had nightmares of these asuras and rakshasas coming all around staying in golkund so he one day goes to mother and says mother i feel very afraid because of these asuras which come if you are afraid you cannot do yoga he goes away he, said, <laughs> he told me he described it himself he said hum aapke paas phir hum kahan jaye abhi ma aapne daat diya ab hum kahan jaye he had his way of saying and then a boil came up on his leg 
and he went and it kept on growing growing all the see this was her way of throwing out all the energies which he at that point didn't understand later on of course he himself great yogi so he went to mother uh, very hesitantly ki abhi kya hoga about his boil big boil painful he says she looked at the boil and my whole body was on fire he was burning day and night and he just didn't know what to do so after few days he says mother i just can't bear it he says go back that's two words nothing no description nothing go back he says how do i go back <laughs> in this state but she arranged everything on her own without his not i mean he didn't know mother is not told anyone but suddenly somebody comes and tells him i am going would you like to come he had no reservation but he got when he came there was a birth was arranged he says by the time i reached chennai 50% of my pain was gone by the time i reached so and so place 75% gone in my village 100% gone that kind of power can we imagine i mean and to hold it within a body she says at several places a sweet and violent heart of ardent calms sweetness violence divine violence which doesn't take and accept any obstacles and calm moved by the passions of the god shall come all mights and greatnesses shall join in her um, mights and greatnesses the gods uh, many interesting stories one of them in the playground when uh, a girl got her the dhatura flower tapasya to give mm-hmm. to mother she said ah Shiva was here few moments back he loves this flower Indra she describes that how he had come and with his thunderbolt which is diamond kind of light all these gods there is even a prayer in prayers and meditation where she addresses Indra and uh, Agni and um, Mitra and it ends with Lord Mitra <laughs> so what kind of mights and greatnesses they must be coming we cannot even imagine join in her beauty shall walk celestial on the earth delight shall sleep in the cloud net of her hair and in her body as on his homing tree immortal love shall beat his glorious wings body made of love a music of griefless things shall weave her charm just to look at her was to forget grief and be freed from suffering no yoga needed i i have people have told me this experience of losing a very close loved one chomdi she was describing how three or three year old father has died and she and her mother go to meet the divine mother and naturally it's a very sad moment no young age 40s and she is a 3 year old child and the mother looks at them and she looks and then she asks only one sentence do you want to meet him or oh, this non prepared completely <laughs> no geeta gyana and all detachment <laughs> then uh, mother <laughs> mini di she is overwhelmed she says hmm. no mother if he is safe with you there is no need yes yes He is very comfortable with me. They come back. They said we don't know where grief vanished. Griefless charm. No philosophy. No sit and meditate. I will teach you this vidya, that practice. In ten days you will find just music of griefless things shall weave her charm. And many many uh, examples. And I must say. one has to witness a death in the ashram what is called as death to experience mm. this mm-hmm. i have seen untimely deaths all kinds of deaths what can be called as accidental deaths but no grief and initially i couldn't believe that you know this is true and so many times i have seen something happens even if you want to feel sad it will just something will come and just wash it away It's like great waves of her love. The harps of the perfect shall attune her voice. 
the streams of heaven shall murmur in her laugh her lips shall be the honeycombs of god so what can we talk about it <laughs> her limbs is golden jars of ecstasy just where she walks her touch even a gesture her limbs the golden jars of ecstasy her breasts the rapture flowers of paradise now you see in this passage one thing that keeps coming recurrently is delight in various forms joy ecstasy delight rapture several places so essentially it is delight and in that delight there is love there is beauty and there is wisdom and might but primarily if you see the overall description it is of anand me delight she shall she shall bear wisdom in her voiceless bosom strength shall be with her like a conqueror's sword and from her eyes the eternal's bliss shall gaze it was one thing we never forgot when we saw mother in her eyes yes wow. such bliss was such an experience there is a picture also of the mother in dispensary uh, those who have seen otherwise we have not seen the room the bigger biggest room the laughter and i often i mean when first time i saw and i was sitting i said who would look at the doctor <laughs> and why would somebody look at the doctor right behind the doctor she is laughing so i used to say humorously and i hope my medical colleagues are not hearing <laughs> that she is laughing at the doctors and the patients both at the doctors because he thinks he is something or someone who can cure at the patient because he feels that this fellow will cure me <laughs> look just go and see a picture that you know just for that picture mother's laughter eyes are closed and you know and the laughter should be to describe several places and he says that she has a very subtle humor several places in the book also you'll find conversations you'll see laughter mother laughs so you know don't listen to people who paint her as a strict disciplinarian with a mother superior with a rod in her hand she is not that she is delight and if sometimes she seems to be tough with you take it as the greatest blessing upon earth mm. it means you are so intimate and close one of the persons to whom the mother would be seen scolding is amrita mm -hmm. and she would say what a foolish thing what you could do and amrita would bo he said and keep smiling and saying yes, yes mother yes, yes mother I'm yes mother stupid yes i'm stupid <laughs> <laughs> somebody asked him amrit you don't feel bad bad <laughs> have you ever heard her doing this to anyone you know how much she loves me it is only because of intimacy and the mother confirmed this shurbi to confirm this she doesn't do it with everyone it's only when somebody is so intimate so close so sweet that she can do it because she knows shubindu says because she knows that she will not be misunderstood when she does that my friend venkat swami mm. who founded the arvind eye clinic yes thousands of people so i went there today on the board huge sign faith yes finally it is faith that kills. finally it is faith that heals what a power she manifested if i just just to imagine that yeah is so what will be the hour when god comes what trumpets will be beating who will announce god is coming god is coming <laughs> so you know often you will see this is a strange contrast one someone told me that you know the problem is people put big billboards and showed me it's one in one of the cities where a lot of swami ji is come this swami ji that ek swat bar sri big big posters yeah. she said uh, 
I think we should do something like that. I said, don't horrify me. Oh. <laughs> this is the best way to finish your Bindo's work. This is not the way. Because the Lord doesn't come like this. If you do all this noise and all this, he will say, okay, thank you. Let Babaji is come, I'll be away. So when does God come? How does he come? A seed shall be sown in death's tremendous hour. A branch of heaven transplant to human soil. Nature shall overleap her mortal step. Fate shall be changed by an unchanging will. So this death's tremendous art is very interesting. We have a lot of, you know, Gita Ghosties and Gita Gyan and Gita lectures, many things. So I have my own way of saying this is the second Gita. Of course, it's actually known as second Gita, which was given in the princely hall of Yudhishthira. But what is the original Gita? Original Gita, you can't be an adhikari sitting in quiet hermitage, you know, hermitage and, you know, trying to analyze Sanskrit. Original Gita comes when you are really in a state of crisis like Arjuna and like him you say, Shishya Steham Sadhimam, guide me, O Lord, thou who art seated within. Then you receive the Gita in your own way. On the battlefield, death's tremendous hour. That is the origin of Gita. It is not an intellectual book to be, you know, like a philosopher studied and compared. It's okay. One can do it. That's perfectly fine. But that state in which Arjuna is, that receptivity because of that intense confusion of dharmas which he is undergoing. Then another thing about death's tremendous hour is, in the first world war, we see the Divine Mother coming. Death's tremendous hour. Then again, death's tremendous hour. First time the supramental descent takes place when Sri is physically leaving his body. And what does he give in the passing? The gift of Savitri. It reminds me of Shiva, who as a Neel Kant was absorbing all the poison of the earth, but giving immortality to people. Really, the birth of Savitri is like that. Death's tremendous hour. First time Savitri came to print was in 1950. That was part one. Part two in 1951. Yeah. Death's tremendous hour. I'll share one brief story that was a dream of Annie. Mm -hmm. And we are in England and I'm climbing up the walls of St. Paul's Cathedral. And they're all afraid, but I see a golden tree in the air. And I said, I must bring a branch down and plant it for mother. And when I told this story to Vladimir, he said, a branch of heaven transplant to, to human mother. soil. Absolutely. Fighting those savage. forces, those powers <sighs> have to be brought down to earth. In... Uh, Indian mythology, you have the tree of Parijat being planted mm. on earth. It was a heavenly tree and the gods were not willing to give. Why? Because if the tree is planted on earth, men will be like gods. So they refuse even Krishna. Krishna has to actually be ready for fight and then they finally concede that, okay, okay, it's okay. So a branch of heaven transplant to human soil. And finally, death's tremendous hour when the advent takes place is when the ego dies. That's when we experience the advent of the Divine Mother within us. So at several places, death's tremendous hour. A, a seed shall be sown in death's tremendous hour. A branch of heaven transplant to human soil. Nature shall overleap her mortal step. Fate shall be changed by an unchanging will. So here ends this uh, wonderful canto in a way. Of course, the last lines are very beautiful. They, they describe with graphic detail, you know, that how Sri must have experienced all these things. That is another beauty of Sri And when you read through Savitri, it's very clear it is real experience. It is described in such detail. See now, for example, how it continues. 
Now the Divine Mother has given the boon. There was a form which came and it gave the boon. Now it is retreating back. So what is that experience? As a flame disappears in endless light. That endless light had assumed the form, the Divine Mother. You know, we see that described in Canto 2 of this book. Immortally extinguished in its source. Not, it's not death. Immortally extinguished in its source. Vanished the splendor and was still the word. An echo of delight that once was close. So what the divine presence leaves in the passing is delight and peace. So people often say uh, guidance by the mother and voice of the mother. This is very ca careful. Even this uh, message was actually directed to somebody who believes that everything mother is guiding me. Mother's guidance doesn't create this kind of tumult, agitation, restlessness. It is something which brings quietude, which which brings an inner state of delight. So this is the experience. The harmony journey towards some distant hush. A music failing in the ear of trance. A cadence called by distant cadences. A voice that trembled into strains withdrawn. So one can see that suddenly there is the sense of some endless vastness into which it's all getting absorbed. Her form retreated from the longing earth, forsaking nearness to the abandoned sense, without which you cannot, you know, you have to suspend all of them. And then there is this great vision. It can only come as a result of grace. Ashwapati is a tapasvi, of course. He has really, if ever earned it, then he has earned it. <laughs> She says that what thou hast earned is thine, but ask no more. Ascending to her unattainable home, lone, brilliant, vacant lay the inner fields. All was unfilled, inordinate spirit space because the delight has withdrawn into a distant hush. All its silence. But, he uses a very interesting word, unfilled. Mm. It's like an empty container waiting for something to come and fill it. Unfilled. It's not empty. <laughs> because it was filled. Look at the beauty of the description. It's not empty space anymore because it was filled and it is withdrawn. So, uh, it's amazing. And without that which was filling, that delight, that form, that Ecstasy, what it becomes? Indifferent, <clears throat> waste, a desert of bright peace. It is peace and luminous peace. But still, what is peace without our Divine Mother? It is a waste, it is a desert. <laughs> How wonderful the description is. Shiva without Shakti is Shav. <laughs> I'll read a little. Yes, please. Then a line moved on the far edge of calm, the warm-lipped, sentient, soft, terrestrial wave, a quick and many-murmured moan and laugh came gliding in upon white feet of sound. Unlocked was the deep glory of silent's heart, the absolute, unmoving stillnesses surrendered to the breath of mortal air. See how the entire process of coming back yes. from that high state, how slowly the terrestrial air, the mortal breath, yes. the atmosphere, the laugh, the moan, and Ashupati is returning to the human field, earthly field. Dissolving boundlessly, the heavens of trance collapsed to waking mind. Eternity cast down its incommunicable lids over its solitude remote from ken behind the voiceless mystery of sleep. So how as he is coming the heavens collapsed. It is like he has entered through a gate and of course he entered through the gate which is described in yes. this book Canto 1 and 2. 
and then he is coming back and then the time comes when the lids close and the gates have closed now he is returning back to earth with all that such a detailed description dissolving boundlessly the heavens of trance collapse to waking mind eternity cast down its incommunicable lids over its solitudes remote from ken behind the voiceless mystery of sleep the grandiose respite failed the wide release across the light of fast receding planes countless planes he has climbed it's unimaginable it's not just uh, classically we speak of seven three below three above and the link plane being super mind but each plane has countless sub planes sub planes sub planes countless worlds and all of them are being left behind suddenly vanishing like is coming too fast back to earth across the light of fast receding planes that fled from him as from a falling star compelled to fill its human house in time his soul drew back into the speed and noise of the vast business of created things is humor this is humor business of created things so that's how one returns back and imagine this is the great sacrifice ashwapati returning back he was given a choice he was given a choice that you he could have merged the himself into the flame or he was given a choice that no you go back and continue but he wants to secure the boon and then come back now he comes back once more the speed and humor of life a chariot of the marvels of the heavens broad base to bear the gods on fiery wheels flaming his swept through the spiritual gates now you see <laughs> eternal lids are closed then through the spiritual gates the spiritual worlds worlds of higher mind illumined mind through all that he is flaming as if you know in a chariot his body like a glowing shell the mortal star received him in its midst once more he moved amid material scenes lifted by intimations from the heights and in the pauses of the building brain touched by the thoughts that skim the fathomless surge of nature and wing back to hidden shores this is very you know very profound even at the most biological level pauses of the building brain so if you really see the activity of the synaptic activity in the brain you actually have pauses of very very brief microseconds when there is a current going on but we don't experience it we feel it is something continuous it's like a cinema show you have mm. separate separate thing mm. but you are running it so fast that you can't register so it's happening with everything our sight is working like that ears are working like that Uh, yet we experience life as if it's a continuous panorama yet it is those pauses which are very important and yogi is not to do it that's why through the breath also you can arrive at that pause pauses between breath pauses between heart beats so in these pauses where nature is gives that opening of the window in one place mother says every day there are several windows that open on to the infinite and it is true even in the body and that's why she says that you know quietude even in the body especially when one is unwell so this is the moment when there is the entry point but it's so small it's like it keeps shutting the gate and the more agitated and restless we are the more hyperactivity the more the shut we don't allow that light to pour in the quieter we become the less agitated less restless less excitement quiet 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 the more we allow this influx so you know this pauses of the brain of the building brain the eternal seeker touched by the thoughts that skim the fathomless surge of nature and wing back to hidden shores the eternal seeker in the aeonic field besieged by the intolerant press of ours 
again was strong for great swift footed deeds once again identified with our humanity morning till evening abhi dining room jana hai even meditation room and playground everything is like super activity you know and all day and that's how we count our day but the day should not be counted in any external way how many times we came in contact with that wonderful presence even when all the time you feel still there are special moments that is the way the day should be counted it can happen any time most casually when you are looking through the window but we count it from the pushed by the hours awake beneath the ignorant vault of night he saw the unnumbered people of the stars and heard the questioning of the unsatisfied flood and toiled with the form maker measuring mind this is what he must be experiencing coming back to the human field a wanderer from the occult invisible suns accomplishing the fate of transient things what he would have explained to people letters questions what he would have said i have come from lands of wanderer from these invisible suns they are my companion people would have felt that i don't know what he is speaking so he had to come down to our human level and write and speak and again and again he would write the same point reiterating it again and again from different angles never showing any impatience never showing any oh i have written to you i have explained to you don't you understand are you such a dimwit nothing not even not replying because i am someone too busy and too special writing again and again and again on smallest of queries that is sure been this compassion accomplishing the fate of transient things and yet he is the one who is guarding and accomplishing the fate a god in the figure of the arisen beast that's one way to look at human form he raised his brow of conquest to the heavens establishing the empire of the soul on matter and its bounded universe as on a solid rock in infinite seas this is the rock of kanyakumari see solid rock of seas where is established this is the seat conquest over heavens gods must be must have watched him hailed him prayed to him but human beings would have sent a query again sir are you so sure about the super mind <laughs> and he would say equally humorously i can see it's still descending down <laughs> these last two lines yes. are so interesting the lord of life resumed his mighty rounds in the vacant field of the ambiguous globe scant. in the scant field of the ambiguous globe he is calling it scant <laughs> because much greater is packed in the beyond so we'll close here end of book 3 canto 4 end of part 1 thank you namaste